entertained Serek Northern football tournament. Medina of Talending up against Falcons of Abuko, two teams with a big fan base and the expectations fit the billions. The atmosphere was colorful and the ambience from both sets of fans was electrifying, depicting the real beauty of Navetan football. <laughs> Thousands of Navetan football enthusiasts filled the Serekuna Ismini Stadium to capacity well before kickoff. Amongst them, the country's football stopped brass. But despite the carnival atmosphere of the game, the 2013 Sesdo Knockout Cup final will be long remembered for the wrong reasons. A controversial second half penalty decision awarded to Medina by a central referee, which turned out to be the difference. A decision many describe as a refereeing blunder, but others too may differ in opinion about the penalty. Medina came into the game chasing a third knockout trophy, whilst Falcons were aiming for their first major title in the Serekunda East Navetans. Despite Medina being the more experienced side and tipped as favourites, it was Falcons who were the better side right from the start. Falcons could have been in front in the opening five minutes, but striker Khalifa Jara failed to direct his free header. Moments later, Falcons had another glorious chance, this time Modu Conte doing very well to dispossess Medina on the edge of the box but he shot over the bar from a decent position. Medina at times looked to have found their rhythm, with some neat passing masterminded by their midfield dynamo, Buba Baji. But Falcons dominated the midfield battle, with Sana Jaju and Modi Konde very outstanding, overshadowing Medina's Mumudu Lamin Jata, who was kept quiet for most of the game. Medina looked to hit their opponents on the break, but any time they attacked, they were repelled back by the outstanding defensive pairing of Marlon Tamba and Seku Jata, with the latter being outstanding at the back for Falcons throughout the campaign, winning almost all the tackles and aerial balls. The first period ended zero apiece, with neither side able to find the target in a very entertaining first 45 minutes. The two teams remain on chain coming into the second period. Four minutes into the second half, this happened. The central referee awarded Medina a penalty after he judged the Falcon player to have handled the ball in the box. The referee did not hesitate to point to the spot, even though television replays indicates that the decision was harsh on Falcons. Whether it is a penalty or not, opinions are bound to differ, but the other talking point was in or outside of the box. Falcons players protested, but the referee's decision will not change. Medina's goalkeeper Segu Sise came from the other side to take the responsibility of the spot kick and the shot stopper turned scorer by calmly slotting the ball past his opposite number to give his side the lead. Despite trailing 1-0 and feeling hard done by the decision, Falcons mounted an all-out offensive, throwing more bodies in front in search of an equalizer. Falcons created numerous chances and came very close to scoring but all their chances went begging. The closest they came was when Umar Juf hit the crossbar from close range and Khalifa Jara heading wide from the rebound. Medina survived and held on to win by 1-0 to leave the Serekuna is knockout trophy. But the final score did not reflect the performance on the pitch. Falcons received a consolation prize of $20,000 whilst Medina went home with $25,000 as winners. The talented outfit has now won the Serekuna East Knockout Trophy for the third time. Medina might be celebrating their third success in this competition, but this particular final will be long remembered by many for the controversial penalty decision, which was the turning point of this very entertaining final. Momades Jalo, GRT Sports. And before we take leave of you, a recap of our stories making headlines. Qatar's ambassador to the Gambia and the EU charged the affairs today held separate talks with the Vice President and Women's Affairs Minister, Her Excellency Dr. Aja Aysatunjai Saidi. Over 150 delegates from West Africa and beyond have commenced two days of deliberation expected to fast track the ECOWAS regional electricity market as well as address regulatory issues, blocking the trend and defining 
buying the art. Poland is moving towards full economic recovery whilst bigger European economies remain in the throes of the global economic crisis. And China has looked beyond its territorial dispute with the Philippines and sent relief workers to aid recovery efforts. Twelve days after the devastating super typhoon Haiyang unleashed its fury. That was all in this edition of the news. Thanks for your time and it's a good night from me. Until then, I am Fatu Janim. Bye. Hello, I am Umin Jai and this for you is Sports Tonight. Coming up in tonight's edition, some Navitan football update for you as Medina Football Club claimed the knockout trophy in the Sarikunda East Navitans, whereas in Manjai the knockout final failed to produce a winner between Marimo Football Club and Bruce B. Parkfoot. Sports Tonight bring you the climax of the summer football jamboree from some of the biggest Navitan zones. Plus an update on the fifth edition of the Sports Journalists Association of the Gambia's Awards Ceremony. Hi there, welcome to Sports Tonight. Hi there, welcome to Sports Tonight. The 2013 Manjai Knockout Cup Final has failed to produce a winner after the game between Marimo Football Club and Bruce B. Park Foot was stopped with less than 10 minutes remaining. Bruce B. Park Foot were leading 1-0 when the central referee decided to stop the game due to darkness. MS Jala watched the controversial final and he reports. Bruce B. Park Foot were just under 10 minutes away from winning the 2013 Manjai Knockout Cup trophy when the game was controversially stopped due to darkness. With the Bruce Ubi fans already in celebration mood, central referee Babukar Bas decided to stop the game when visibility becomes less clear. Bruce Ubi came into the game casing their first major title in the Manjai Navetan. In fact, they are appearing in the tournament for the first time, having qualified to the Navetan proper with the narrowest of margin. Marimo Football Club of Manjai Kunda, on the other hand, is one of the giants of the Manjai Navetans. The Father Gulf Sports Complex was virtually filled to capacity as Bruce Ubi Park Food Football Club attempts to make history. The game started some 40 minutes late, but when the central referee finally got the game underway, it was Marimo who gained the upper hand, trying to impose some early dominance, but Bruce Ubi stood up to the test. The debutants kept their composure, making it tough for their opponents. The cautious approach by both teams resulted in few clear-cut chances being created, and the first half ended in a stalemate. The second period saw both teams showing some attacking intent, with Bruce Ubi Parkfoot growing in confidence as the game progresses, with their striker Mumu Lamin Silla causing all sorts of problems for the Marimo defenders with his pace. The breakthrough finally came in the 56th minute, when Mumu Lamin Silla made another busting run down the right flank before whipping in a dangerous cross into the box forcing Marimo's Bubakar Jalo to slice the ball into his own net for an own goal, which gave Bruce Ubi the lead. Trailing by a goal to nil, Marimo started moving forward in numbers, desperately searching for an equalizer, with their coach effecting changes, bringing on fresh legs. The Manjai base team pressed very hard, but the visitors from Bruce Ubi defended pretty well. But with the clock fast ticking towards the end of the game, darkness also started taking its toll in the game and the visibility became increasingly poor, which wasn't ideal to play football. The referee then called the two captains to tell them they need to stop the game, but the Bruce Ubi Park Food players objected to the decision, resulting in a brawl with some Bruce Ubi players attacking the referee and his assistants, who had to be rescued and whisked away by the security. Three of the Bruce Ubi players involved were shown red cards by the referee. The decision to stop the game with less than 10 minutes to play left the Bruce Ubi players, officials and fans furious, who were leading at the time by one goal to zero and on course to make history. So now despite Bruce Ubi Park Foot leading one nil, when the game was stopped, with less than 10 minutes remaining, the Manjai Kunda Sports Committee has now decided to replay the game fresh, a decision they said was based in accordance with the rules and regulations guiding the Manjai Nawetan competition. The date for the replay is Friday 21st November. Marimo has no query replaying the game, but Bruce Ubi, who were leading and just few minutes away from winning their first major title, said they are not going for any replay. 
That is the controversy hanging over the Manjai Knockout Cup final. What will happen next? Only Friday will tell. From Manjai to...